some very exciting years ahead and hopefully we'll both dominate boxing for the, yeah, for the next few years. Hopefully at the start of 2020 we can have two world champions in the family and two world champions in Australia. I'm Jason Maloney, I am currently rated number three in the world. I'm originally from Melbourne, right now living in Kingscliff, New South Wales. I'm Andrew Maloney, WBA world number one at Super Flyweight. Uh, formerly Commonwealth Games gold medalist at Glasgow 2014. Grew up in Melbourne, now living in Kingscliff, New South Wales. Oh, that's a huge right hand, and that'll do world class performance. Oh, big left hook! It's great to have a, have a twin brother that obviously has the same passions, and we're both professional boxers. We're both on the cusp of fighting for world titles, and it's something that's obviously taken us a lot of years of hard work to get to this point, but uh, it's very exciting. We've got, got a great group of people around us supporting us and that believe in us. We started boxing when we were 13, originally to get a bit of fitness for AFL, we loved our footy, wanted to play AFL and picked up boxing pre-season to add a bit of fitness, but just fell in love with the sport. We're really competitive people, so we sort of just pushed each other on, pushed each other on. and eventually started fighting and we just loved the sport and just wanted to be the best we could be. I think being twins we're extremely competitive with each other and, and that's what's pushed us every day in training is just trying to outdo each other when we're running, when we're swimming, when we're doing circus, when we're sparring, whatever we're doing we're trying to push each other and, and outdo each other and after doing that for 16 years we've got ourselves to a pretty high level. Being competitive against each other is one thing but we also try and help each other to become the best we can be and Hopefully we can both do this together and, and be world champions for many years. I can do a little bit of everything really. Um, I can box on the back foot and move or I can come forward and be aggressive. So I just dictate what I want to do, what I think is going to be the easiest way for me to win the fight. I'm always in exciting fights. The lighter weights don't get the recognition they deserve because sometimes they lack that knockout power but that's something I believe me and my brother both have. When we first took up boxing, our idol was Danny Green. Absolutely loved watching him fight and just wanted to be him. And then obviously, years and years on down the track, we, we got to meet Danny and, and Angelo and they've just been both so supportive of us and our careers. Obviously, Green is retired now, but he's decided he wants to help us out and do whatever he can to support us. And he's stepped in and, and helping out. He's putting on this big show and given us the opportunity. So now we've just got to grab it with both hands and impress, let our fists do the talking and, and hopefully this is the start of something really big. I was shocked when I first heard this was going to happen, to be honest. I mean, this is beyond my wildest dreams. My dream was always to become world champion, but I never thought I'd have the opportunity to do that here in Australia, in front of my friends and family and everyone that supported me over the years. So I'm just really thankful to the people involved. November 15, Australia's going to have a new world champion. This is huge, you know, when you get a chance to fight on a, in front of a big audience on a big show like this, you really want to make the most of it and, and really impress. And I'm hoping that if I have a dominant win in this fight that my next fight will be for a world title, so there's a lot at stake. Yeah, I fought Emmanuel Rodriguez for the IBF world title, lost a split decision. Looking back on it, I perhaps maybe gave him a bit too much respect early. Uh, started a little bit slow, but once I got in the groove and sort of got my comfort and got my confidence, I really, really gave it to him. And, you know, if that fight had gone another round or another two rounds, I'd be world champion right now. So it gives me confidence knowing that I can match it and I can beat top level fighters like that and I'm good enough to be, become world champion. So right now, hopefully I'll get another big win here and early next year, fight for a world title and become world champion and achieve my dream. I think me and Andrew are both entertaining fighters and I take pride in in not only winning, but winning in impressive fashion and putting on a great show that, so that people leave and say, geez, I can't wait to watch Jason Maloney fight again. So I definitely take pride in that. I think I've got an entertaining style and I hope everyone enjoys what they see on November 15th. Yeah, the Conception fight and the Gonzalez fight would be my two biggest fights to date. They're both ex very different from each other. The Conception fight, I outboxed him and he was very aggressive coming forward. So I outboxed him and put on a, a clinical boxing display. The Gonzalez fight, Went over to Chile and fought him. He was then world number two in his own backyard and I knew the judges were going to be against me so we went there to knock him out and, and that's what I did. I, I, I figured they might give me a, a fair run. They, everyone seemed pretty, pretty friendly in the lead up but as the fight got started and 
I tripped on the canvas and they called it a knockdown. Uh, the alarm bells went off and I realised that they weren't going to be doing me any favours and, and possibly if I didn't knock him out I wasn't going to win the fight. That happened to be the case, I knocked him out and it turned out the scorecards had him up by two rounds so there's no way that should have been the case. Yes, I'd go to Chile and win the Eliminator but to have the opportunity to fight for the world title here in Australia is just amazing. I really wanted a hard fight as this will be my fight before I fight for a world title. I really wanted a solid test. We've got the world number 10, Dixon Flores, that I'm fighting, and I know it's going to be a hard fight, but these are the sort of guys I've got to beat, and got to beat impressively if I want to be world champion, and that's what I plan on doing. Yeah, me and Angelo have sat down and, and watched a fair bit of footage. He definitely comes to fight. He has a real crack and sets a high pace, so we're going to have our work cut out for us, but um, I think I'm a better fighter overall, and I think I've got what it takes to beat him. So I'm fighting a guy named Elton DeHarry, originally from Guyana, but grew up in uh, New York, trains out of the famous Gleason's Gym, which is a very well-known gym in the boxing scene. So I'm sure he's around great fighters every day and, and great coaches. Since he's trained at that gym, he hasn't lost in 10 years. So I'm expecting a hard fight, but you don't become world champion in an easy fight. So after watching footage of him, I'm very confident I can beat him. Well, we've obviously got a game plan for the fight, but all I see is myself winning the fight. If it comes by points or a knockout, I'd love a knockout, but if I, if I win on points, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'll become world champion at the end of the day, and I'm just going to be over the moon. The ultimate dream is for myself to become world champion in this fight, and then Jason's going to have that opportunity early next year. This will be the best show in Australian boxing this year. Uh, there's a great undercard. Obviously, myself and Andrew fighting for a world title, and Baz and Gallen, which is going to be a cracker. So tune in. It's going to be one of the, I reckon, the best show of the year, and one that you don't want to miss. Barry Hall v. Paul Gowan. Pay-per-view live on Main Event.